Survivor has been on the air for 44 consecutive seasons, and there's been numerous memorable contestants, including Stephen Fishback, two-time competitor and fan favorite. Stephen joins me now via Zoom. Stephen, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm uh, honored to be here. <laughs> okay, so you competed on two different se seasons, Survivor Token Teens and Survivor Second Chances. So what were your experiences like on both of those shows, and how would you say they compare? Well, I think there's nothing quite like stepping onto the beach for that first time. Although my first time wasn't there was no actual beach. <laughs> I was in uh, I was in Brazil and in, inland in Brazil, so I was a it was a riverbank. But stepping onto that riverbank for the first time and looking around you at the 15 strangers that you were going to have this crazy incredible adventure with, you're going to have to betray them. They're going to be trying to betray you. Just the pure adrenaline of that initial moment is so exciting the sense that the world is like totally open you know the world of this game is totally open to you almost anything goes you know within a few very uh limited rules um was absolutely thrilling and um i did pretty well so that made it a much more positive experience uh in my second time on and on cambodia it was uh an all-star season Everyone knew the game. They were all, you know, true, uh, true uh, rogues gallery of players. And um, it was such an intense, high pressure season. Yeah. But it was also on a beach. I was so there was an actual beach to step onto um, that that was uh, on the island of Koh Rong in Cambodia. So um, it was so, so cool to be, like have that like classic tropical beach experience, you know, that you kind of associate with Survivor, you know, palm trees and coconuts. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as you were kind of teasing there, both of your seasons were in very different landscapes. So your first was more kind of like desert feel and the second was the classic beach we know today. So would you say that made a difference at all in your time on the show? I mean, definitely there's aspects of the beach that were just easier. There was a lot more um, like food to eat, for example. You know, we could like go into the sea and we could get shellfish and and, and mussels and, and uh, crabs and you know occasionally even actual real fish um whereas in um brazil there was just very very little that we could actually subsist on in fact production provided us with some rice and beans and so the, the pure starvation aspect of brazil um was a lot tougher we were also in like a particularly bleak uh little area mm -hmm. um in in jalapau which you know apparently has some disproportionate number of all of like the world's spiders and snakes. Oh, <laughs> um, but the excitement of being in that portion of Brazil that, you know, none of us had seen before, of course, you know, none of us, you know, would probably ever expect to see in our lives and being in this little remote region, we were on the Rio Novo, which is one of like the purest rivers like left in the world that you could actually just drink straight from really felt magical. I mean, it added to that magic of it being our first survivor experience. The part the fact that we were in this location that no other survivor season had ever been in, and yeah. many Americans probably never even heard of. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so with that season, many Survivor superfans will probably remember your unlikely duo with JT where he went on to win and you were runner up. Um, so did you ever expect that you would be in like a strong duo alliance like that? And also, are you still in touch with JT today? So I never thought I would bond with JT. I mean, I always figured, you know, I, I was coming from New York. I worked in media. I was like, I need to be on a tribe with older professionals. And then suddenly I'm with a group of like young country kids. And I thought, oh no, I am screwed. And, but I just developed this bond with this young cattle rancher, JT. He and I saw the game the same way. We both wanted to work hard. We both wanted to play hard and we wanted to, you know, play strategically. And I, truly, like, I could never have imagined that it would be so incredibly um, successful. And he he went on to win the game. So it was much more successful for him than for me. But I was I was sitting next to him when he won. Um, and what was the second half of your question? And are you still in touch with JT today? Oh, I am. We we talk, uh, you know, so we, we talk regularly. I actually officiated his wedding a couple years ago, oh, which was really cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, it's so interesting because I feel like in a lot of ways you guys kind of set the precedent for those unlikely duos that maybe we've seen um, in newer seasons. So I don't know, just interesting all the way around. All right, if you were ever asked back in the future, would you return and play Survivor for a third time? I think I've hung up my buff. I mean, I'm I'm uh, 44 now. I've got one kid with another kid on the way. I feel like too old and frail. Like I was already pretty frail even when I was a 29 year old. So um, now at, at uh, 44, I'm not sure I'm the right you know the the right competitor for the game. But 
I'm still, you know, extremely actively engaged in the in the community and in the fandom. You know, I love to watch Survivor. I watch every week. I podcast about the show on um, the Survivor Know It Alls, um, and it's 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 such a fantastic show, and it's been so fun to watch the game evolve over time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Stephen, we're gonna take a quick break and come right back with more from Stephen Fishback and Survivor. <laughs> 